America! Well, you're a massive patriot and you want the best of the best drones in the USA? This one might be for you. G'day, Stu here from Early Futures, and today, well, we're going to be checking out the America. <laughs> Oh, that actually hurts my voice when I say that. But what this is, for those of you who couldn't understand that, this quad, it's called the Merica. It's pretty much, it's from Catalyst Machine Works. It's a serious five-inch racer, tiny little pod style. And let me tell you, there are some crazy innovations in this frame, some really, really cool stuff that they're doing that I think a lot of people are going to like. Now, it's a premium racer. It's pretty expensive. We're going to drop the link down below. So we're going to be sticking it on the bench. This is a two-part review. We're going to be breaking it down. And I'm going to be showing you guys why I'm so excited about this, why I think it's heading in the right direction, and... Uh, uh, also, for you patriots out there, you know, it's pretty, it's probably like, it is the most Americanized quad I've ever seen. Anyway, enough rambling from me, let's stick it on the bench and get started. Alrighty, so here it is on the bench, and honestly, look, these aren't the props that came with it, but look at this thing, does it not, like, whether you're patriotic or not, you've got to admit, this thing is just screaming speed, absolutely, I mean, look at that profile, of flash, flash and pictures on the screen, this thing looks like it's going to go very very fast indeed so i'm super excited and not only that it also feels pretty robust as a bit of an overview this is a five inch racer it's primarily designed just to be a racer it's not going to carry a gopro or anything like that although we do have some gopro options but that's not where uh not where the goods are on this bad boy it's just designed to be some flat out insanity speed that also comes in with the you know can take a beating very very well and catalyst machine works make some of the finest crafts out there but they're also pretty expensive you know it's like 500 US dollars, so that's a lot of money. So we're going to be finding out exactly what you get in your quadcopter, and I've got to tell you, there's a lot of cool things in here that I think they've done very, very well. Now, one of the things that gives it away is a bit of a racer. Not only do we have the ultra-thin arms, it's in the stretched X fashion as well, so, you know, we should be getting some clean airflow in the back, and there's some really clever designs that make this even more silky smooth when it's cutting through the air. You can see it's looking very, very lightweight, so what we should do, let's stick it on the scales and find out how much it weighs. So it's coming in. Oh, I better turn my scales on. That's going to help there, Stuart. Good one. So let's turn the scales on. It's coming in at 271 grams. Now as a bit of a comparison, I've got my Norris right here as well, so you can see this thing is beat up, and uh, why does it look like that, Stuart? Well, this is from Catalyst Machine Works as well. If you haven't seen this video, I'll leave a link up here somewhere. Go and watch that. I love this quad. I take it with me every weekend. It definitely gets a run. It's right up there with my Talon, my Chameleon, and the Norris. They're sort of my three go-to quads. If I'm putting this on here as well, that's coming in at 272 grams, so pretty much the exact same weight. So, what differences are there? Well, let's jump in, have a bit more of a close look at the components rocking in this bad boy in the America. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these props off, because look, it is designed to spin five inch props. Props off for the boys, and I'm gonna leave a link below to the frame, to all the TPU options, all that sort of stuff, and I think, I'm not 100% sure, go and check that link out. They might actually have a bind and fly after this video. You might be able to get this exact one, because trust me, this thing looks like it's gonna be a menace on the race field. It's gonna definitely turn and some heads. So, the first thing we're going to point out, if I put this to the side, look at that carbon. Look how thick these parts are. So you've got a huge brace at the front. Those arms are ridiculously thick. So you can see, if you flip it over, it comes in as four main arms, and look, I guess, with two braces. And I've got to say, this thing is extremely rigid. Good luck trying to bend that. It's going to be holding its shape very, very well and should make it very, very, I guess, stiff and agile in the air. It's not going to get pushed around very easily. Now, this carbon right here, these braces are thicker than most frames. So if we measure this, that's coming in at four millimeters there. So that brace plate is four millimeters. The arms themselves, they're coming in at five millimeters. So an extremely thick, um, this thing, look, it's not gonna be snapping. If you snap one of these, I wanna see that video because this thing should take an absolute pounding. Now, on the, now speaking of those arms, on the end, this is where we've got our brother hobby motors. I've got the Returner R4s, 2207s, 2400 kV. These are a pretty good motor. I'm expecting it to slice and I'd expect nothing less from a Catalyst Machine Works pods. We want really, really good stuff in here because look, you're paying for a premium frame. So let's have a look at some premium components. Now there's not really too much I can say on the outside because everything else is in this very smart little stack, little stack and uh, the, what they've done here I think is really, really clever. The only other part I wanna talk about, I guess, that we're not gonna be able to see until we open this up is on the back here, they've got a nice big capacitor to help with any voltage spikes or any of that sort of stuff and they've put it right at the XT60. So I think that's a pretty good idea. Keeps it out of the way and uh, makes for a very, very clean build. Now, 
Let's get into the good stuff. What we're gonna do, we're gonna open it up and have a bit of a closer look at how this thing goes together and why I'm so excited. Now, one beauty about this, look, it is in a pod form. It looks like everything in there is gonna be very difficult to work on, but it's actually surprisingly easy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna undo these four screws right here in the top of the TPU. So we're gonna loosen that and that's gonna allow us, we can then very easily take off our top part and work on our quads. So I'm gonna undo these four, bear with me. Right, so now I'm gonna take those off and you can see they came out pretty easy and then uh, straight away you've got access to your ESCs and then we've got our full-size VTX flight controller and little mini FPV camera which we're looking at a little bit more in detail as well so look it's pretty easy to jump in and start working on your components now speaking of the ESC I've got in mind what I really like about this frame is just how easy it is to work on things really really clever designs and uh, you can fit things like as a whole bunch of stuff like all-in-ones it all fits in a very very clever sort of like little underslung part right here we're going to talk about that in detail as well in a little bit once we get through the components but you know in mind we've got a 40 amp 4 in 1 you know a massive ESC in here when I say massive you know it can take a heap of current and that's exactly what I'm expecting because this thing it's going to be pulling a lot of juice because I'm going to be pushing this thing to its limits and I am so excited now on top of that you can see in this little pod right here very very snug what we've got we've fitting in our VTX so this is our TBS Unified Pro on top of that we've got our F4 flight controller it's actually hanging upside down and the reason that is so you can access the USB and all that sort of stuff and this little sort of button on the side so when it's in your pod you've still got access to your USB you can press the buttons nice and easy and you know flash some pictures on the screen but you can still access everything so even though everything's sort of crammed in here you've still got access when you need to press the buttons and all that sort of jazz you don't need to take this off if you don't want to now one really clever feature that I thought gee that's a fantastic idea you know a lot of people are soft mounting their flight controllers their gyros that really helps this frame right here the America they've done something with it, which I thought gee that's a fantastic idea. So they're no longer, you know, you can mount one, it looks like, to the frame if you wanted to. But what these guys are actually doing, they're soft mounting it by default by putting their flight controller up, mounting it to the TPU. So you can see the flight controller is not actually mounted to the hard parts of the frame. It's mounted by the TPU. Now we're going to get that out and have a minute in a look in a minute. So we're just going to undo these four screws. All right, so I've loosened those four screws on the top. And then you can see if I open it up, that's where we've got our flight controller. It was soft mounted in there, so I really love that sort of little design choice. And then in the very, very top, I'm not gonna completely disassemble it, we've got our little run cam micro in there. So all in all, super micro components, but they fit pretty well. And I reckon even if you had some sort of larger things like the Asgards, they're gonna fit quite nicely just because of the, you know, the good design choices they've gone through, really thought it out, and I think it fits very, very nicely in here. So I've got a little actual antenna on the back, and overall, I think the components in this thing are top notch, but you'd also be able to build up a pretty good one regardless you know it's got a lot of versatility regardless of what you want to put in here I think it's going to fit well as long as you've got a micro FPV camera because that's really what makes this build work so well in my opinion they've really shrunk everything down made that profile super small so it's going to be slicing through the air now one feature I want to talk about you know the way they put their full builds together you might think gee if I buy one of their bind and flies you know in those links down below how am I going to actually bind it up do I have to take it apart to get access to the receiver and I'm going to say no not at all the channel select for the Unify Pro and all also, for the little bind button, actually when it's on there, they've got this really smart hole at the back that's not only going to offer some cooling when it's going through the air, because look, you do need a bit of airflow over your components, especially when it's going to be pulling as much juice as this thing, but you can still press your bind button just by pushing something through this back hole through there. So I think that part's pretty smart as well. Anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm really excited to talk about the design parts, which is going to come up next. So I'm going to put this back together and then we can talk about the design because look, we've got great components in here, but the actual airframe itself is designed really, really well. And I think there's some great great clever things that I want to show you guys. So let's cut back once I put it back together in three, two, one. All right, so it's all back together. Now what I'm excited about, usually, you know, I'm really wrapped to talk about the components and look, this thing is top notch, but the actual design of the frame itself, I think they've done some really, really clever things. So number one, let's talk about the design choices when it comes to look, look how thick this thing is. The, the carbon in here, it's super robust. I really don't think you're going to be snapping this anytime soon. It's aerodynamics, look off the chain, like going through the air, this thing should absolutely slice and the, we've got these thin arms but it's not compromised by structural integrity or anything like that so I think it's going to be a very very robust very fast quad. Now the second design choice that I like I really like you know like I mentioned before it's got soft mounted flight controllers by default that's great it's in the TPU so you don't really need to do anything you don't need to worry about any of your gyros or anything like that because look it is there's going to be some vibrations from your motors that's in a lot of our quads and uh, just now 
You don't need to worry about that. The next good choice I think they've done over at Catalyst Machine Works, everything in here, even though it's really compact, it's still very easily accessible. So you can access your blind buttons there, your USB or your VTX on the side right here. And if you really wanted to, I'll flash a picture on the screen. If you want to take this top canopy completely off, all you need to do is take out these two little connectors and that's it. That's how they're connected in. So they're just completely separate. If you need to work on your top canopy for whatever reason, you can completely disassemble it from your quad. So I think that's a great design choice. And then here, look, I've been holding out on you guys. Here's my favorite part. This is my absolute hands down favorite good design choice about this frame. And I'll flash some pictures on the screen as well. I'll see if I can get this in focus a little bit better. Bear with me. So right here you can see we've got our arms, which are absolutely mammoth, like really, really thick, really strong. You've got your bottom brace plate, fair enough. On top of that, you've got this little space, which gives you not only enough space to put your components in here, and that's also holding, I guess, your top plate before the canopy comes on. But look at the way the arms are actually staggered. So this one here, you've got six mils. This is on the bottom six mils. This one, it's up on the top half. So what that actually does, if you look at the height difference from this motor to this motor over here, you're actually gonna be getting some clean air. They've staggered the props just a little bit. So uh, that's gonna be enough in fast forward flight. This is gonna help this motor or these back props get into even fresher air, which I think is gonna result in an ultra silky smooth flight experience. So I think that's really, really clever. And what a great idea, what a great way to do things. So I'm a big fan of that because look, it's no different. They could have done it around the other way in like a normal frame, but really clever thinking. I thought, well, let's just stagger those arms by those couple of mils. I think that's a fantastic, they're onto a winner there. So I love that design choice. And then the last little part that I thought that's pretty smart. Look, some people worry about, they call them toothpick arms, but trust me, like, look at that thing. There's no way that thing's gonna be breaking very easily, especially because there's not too much, I guess, length or throw on here. You're not gonna be getting too much torque. So because they're even shorty, it's gonna be even more robust because it's not spinning all that pressure, all that stress over a long sort of span. So I like that part. But how easy it is to replace an arm. If you actually do break one of these, it is super easy to replace. So all you need to do is take the screws out of there. And then at the front, you simply need to loosen this back screw. Let me get the right driver here. Loosen this back screw. Take this one screw out. Then once you've done that, you can see you can simply slide your arm out you know, pretend this is broken, you'd have to cut your heat shrink, all that sort of stuff, put a new one in. So swapping an arm on this thing should take about five minutes. So I'm a massive fan of that as well. I think 10 out of 10 for design. This is one of the best design quadcopters I've ever seen in terms of the frame anyway. Massively, massively impressed. All right, so put that arm back in, took about one minute. So I really like how easy it is to work in. Let's talk about the quality of this thing because for quality, look, I've got to give it 10 out of 10 as well. Not only the components that if you get in the bind and fly, whatever it is linked down below for this sort of thing, absolutely ridiculous, like top notch, the best of the best they can be, but they'd want to be, I mean, for the price. But the quality and the design of the frame itself is absolutely really, really impressive. I mean, it's really robust. The carbon's cut really nicely. The prints feel fantastic, very, very clean. And I've also got to mention the way that they do their bind and flies, the way that they've been put together, really, 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 really meticulous. And I would say all the solder joints are really, really shiny, 10 out of 10 for quality as well. So uh, I'm, I'm a big fan in terms of quality. Now, let's move on, talk about the pros and and the cons so straight away i'm going to say the price you know the airframe aside if you're getting the bind and fly look it's a lot of money 500 bucks or whatever it is i'll check the link down below i'm not sure of the exact price but 500 bucks is a lot of money when it comes to there's some other cheap options out there but is this thing worth it or is there a market for it and i would say yeah for some people who want the best of the best or they don't mind paying a little bit extra to get some of the top-notch stuff out there or they're really hardcore into races and they want that performance i think something like this there's definitely a market for that but you need to weigh that up and be you know be mindful of look it is a little bit more expensive than some of the other quads out there now if you're going to be carrying a gopro even though this thing comes with a gopro mount i don't think that that's really designed what it's after here's the gopro mount actually right here you can adjust your camera angle all that sort of jazz i don't think that's what it's designed for. It's nice that it comes with it, and I do like that flexibility, but I really think you'd be doing a disservice to this quad because this looks like it's just all about flat out insanity speed. So that's, I guess that's a pro and a con. If you want to carry a GoPro, you know, you might be sort of letting this frame down a little bit. I still think it's going to rip around absolutely crazy fast, but uh, you know, it's not really what this quad is all about. It's all about agility, speed, and just like balls to the wall, crazy, crazy flying. One other con too, I guess, you know, with everything being so small, you've kind of got to think about 
about your battery placement, what size, if you're gonna be running one of those bigger batteries, I think this thing is much more suited to little square pads because that's gonna keep the CG and the aerodynamics a little bit better. And uh, if you're running a little bit bigger, bigger battery, you're gonna be getting some extra drag. So if you want the most out of this bad boy, make sure you're putting in some of those square batteries. Now let's move on and talk about the pros. Well, number one, the, like, you know, the components in here, top notch. Everything in here is like the best of the best. It's super lightweight. It's gonna be very, very fast. It's extremely robust and it's got some great design choices that let you work on it easily. Swap out arms, change your channels, all that sort of stuff. You can still access the USB by keeping everything sort of miniaturized in a central place. And that design feature of like having those back props up a little bit more, I think is an absolute genius idea. And more frames should actually do that. More of those split arms should definitely be doing that. And also I finally got to, you know, I finally got to give it to these guys now. This looks like it has some serious camera protection in the past, you know, even if we hit a flag or something, you've got this bar across the front, this quad actually protects our camera. I'm happy with the protection that this, that this quad is offering. So I'm big 10 out of 10 there. Finally, we're actually getting that right because I always harp on about camera protection and it's great to see this quad's gonna be protecting your camera. So look, overall, if you're after like one of the best of the best racers on the market, I think this is, this could possibly, we'll have to wait to see it to the flight experience, but this is showing me all the right signs and from Catalyst Machine Works, they've done some great stuff in the past. I think uh, this thing is gonna be a force to be reckoned with, with like 2017, 2018. Look out because I'm expecting a lot of these Merikas, the joke name aside, you know, that's kind of funny, but I'm expecting a lot of these to be taking a lot of names in the race events because uh, it's just, it, I'm, I'm just in love, I guess. It's, it's a really, really high quality machine. Alrighty, there it is. There's my part one review of the America, and I'm expecting big things from this bad boy. It really is a serious bad boy. I mean, not only is the frame really, really well designed, some of my favorite features of how it's so easy to work on for a sort of canopy style, and the best, the my absolute favorite one is the way it sort of separates these arms just by a few mils, you know, by putting it up a little bit, you're going to be getting some fresh air in here, and I'm expecting some silky smooth flight characteristics, and just how tough this thing is. I'm I mean, for an ultralight and Catalyst Machine Works does know how to build their quads tough. I mean, the Norris, watch my part to review of that. We smacked that thing into the ground like 100 miles per hour or 90 miles per hour and it just laughed it off. It was absolutely crazy. And this thing feels even more rigid and like, could you get any thicker arms? So traditionally, I don't like these ultralight quads because they seem to, I feel like they're really fragile, but this thing, the America, I think is gonna be super tough. Now as with all drones, look, it's not perfect. There's gonna be, this quad's not gonna be for everyone. Number one, it's the price. Like, it's probably up there with the most expensive bind and fly races that you can get. Catalyst Machine Works makes some top notch stuff, but you also gotta pay a bit of a premium for it. So you know, a lot of people aren't gonna like the price, but for some people, if you're serious into racing or you just want the best of the best, maybe that's better value for you. And the other thing, it's not gonna suit everybody as well like I don't think this one's really designed for a GoPro even though it comes with it and it can carry a GoPro mount I don't think that that's what this is after this is all about speed insanity and uh, just just look at this thing you know this thing is gonna absolutely rip so definitely stay tuned for part two because that's when we're gonna be taking it out to the field doing the flight review I hand it over to Grumpy Trev cash crash test Cal he's gonna hit it with the speed gun and we're gonna be finding out just how fast we can get this bad boy to go and what it feels like in the air. Anyway, subscribe for more FPV related content. I drop some patriotic comments down below and as always, happy flying.